Broadcasting live from the Roanoke Valley of Southwestern Virginia. Join us and see what life looks like from a medium's perspective with Reverend Tracy Lockwood, the medium's medium. We'll explore the tools of psychic development, hear stories and experiences from the other side, and learn to listen to our natural intuition. Now, our host, Reverend Tracy Lockwood. Hello, beautiful lights, and welcome to another episode of From a Medium's Perspective. Today, you are going to really enjoy our guest, but before I tell you about her, I wanted to remind you that if you're interested in developing your abilities, I am now offering a wide array of options. I just put it up on my website about a week ago, and I would be happy for you to take a look at mediumtracylockwood.com. I have a page called Training for You, and there are just an amazing uh, array of things that you can do, everything from academic study to channeling to spirit art to psychic development, mediumship training, And, of course, our certification program that I offer. So take a look, take a gander, see what you think. That's mediumtracylockwood.com. And I'll be promoting it a little bit more here on YouTube um, a little bit later there. So um, today, I thought I would bring to you yet a different perspective on the intuitive world. Our guest today is a young entrepreneur. Uh, She is thriving in the beautiful Rocky Mountains of British Columbia, Canada, and she lives off-grid in a forest home intrinsically connected with nature. She's a visual artist, but she's also built her career around being a self-taught, intuitively, uh, let me say that again, intuitively guided tattoo artist. She trained in Reiki and has had a consistent curiosity for studying the unseen, and her life is surrounded by magic. She harnesses her intuition to specialize in healing and spiritual tattoos and works of art. So here today, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our guest, Miss Kaya Dubois, to talk to us about the art of life and creating your own masterpiece. Welcome, Miss Kaya Dubois. Thank you, Tracy. It's so beautiful to be on your show today. I'm so happy to have you. I know a lot of our listeners like to tune in and uh, check out the website of the person that's being interviewed sometimes during the show. So I'm going to give that to you now. It's souloftheboreal.com. And that's S-O-U-L, like soul, of the boreal, like the boreal forest, b o r e a l dot com, soul of the boreal dot com. <laughs> I love that. I love that. What made you come up with that? Although it resonates, I'm just curious. Uh, it's that's actually a very funny story. Um, as my uh, my business name is Soul of the Boreal Tattoos and Art Studio, but it's only been that since June. But I've been in business for about five years. I uh, started my business under Sink and Ink Tattoos, and it was basically just a name that kind of got me off my feet. It got me recognized, helped me build my business. And then um, when I moved into this past year and I was really coming into my own, I was like, you know, this this name of my business needs to represent me and not just my business. I'm becoming yeah. the face of my business and not the face behind my business anymore. And uh, now that I do actually live in the Boreal Forest, and I've always been just a little elemental fairy soul, one with nature, Uh that soul of the Boreal tattoos and art studio, to include my artwork now, just made so much more sense and really felt more like me. Yeah, yeah. What, um, you know, all of us are on a journey. We're on a soul path. We're uh, expressing ourselves different ways. And uh, I've mentioned in previous shows that, you know, being a psychic medium is 
not really any different than anyone does every day that that our intuitive abilities are expressed through art and music and dance and uh, poetry, writing, all kinds of things. Um, what? Tell us a little bit about why you're where you are now or how you got where you are now. Um, well, I think like a lot of people who do identify as sensitive or empaths or mediums or psychics, I think, you know, if we're at this point in our lives, we can all agree that we were born into it, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we came into the world. So far. <laughs> yeah. We came into the world with our abilities, with our sensitivities, and maybe it took you later on in the world, in your life, to realize and, and be consciously aware of all the steps the universe was giving you and how unrandom it is. But I really, um, I was really born into it. I was born with my single mother, but she made sure that I had access to any religion, any faith, any culture I wanted to explore. I got to explore a lot of witchcraft with her friends, with uh, uh, her new age friends. I went to Catholic school and fine arts schools. Um, my mother organized theater, so I was in aspects of all sorts of artistic life, really. And my mother made sure to... Um, really nurture that gift of mine of art all schools i went to all extracurricular activities i wanted to attend were always art based in any sort of way whether it was music or drawing or writing um, or even acting um, as a teenager we moved from a really big city in our neighboring province alberta to this really small town where i am now in cranbrook british columbia um, which is just a valley town surrounded by forest, five minutes in any direction is nature. Um, and then into my teens, again, I think a lot of sensitive, a lot of empaths can identify with possibly some dark times they went through in their life because they didn't understand their feelings. They didn't understand uh, the energies around them and it just maybe made them feel a little nuts, right? Right, right. And uh, so I had to go through this bit of a dark time and I, I lost my parents later on um, close to my 20s. And eventually after years of just dealing with um, my sensitivity and dealing with my abilities and dealing with all the chaos life throws at me in a really unhealthy way, I decided that I, enough was enough. And when I was coming out of it, I got reintroduced into my spirituality and reintroduced into my art again. And it came not even full swing it came like a freight train hurtling through and there was just no stopping it at all yeah and because of that you know i got reintroduced back into crystals and i and i started um meeting people who were sensitive and and who had uh these psychic abilities and they were really able to help me identify what was going on in my own head which you know changing that perspective on um how you deal with the chaos of life and where, and once you understand how it is that you're acting and why it is that you're acting this way in response, you know, you can really start to harness those gifts and you can, you know, turn it around in a much more positive light. And that's kind of in a summarized way, how I came to this point of life. Oh, that's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. I didn't realize we shared such a tight circle of commonality. Um, not in our life stories, but my dad uh, was theater and my mom was an artist and I ended up going the psychic way. So it's yeah. like interesting. <laughs> the, you know, it's way. really not like a far-fetched. Uh, no, it isn't. Stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think um, more and more people are piecing together the fact that we are much more than our physical body. I had a guest on last week that was saying that you know, 99% of us is non-physical. And I thought, oh, what a cool perspective. And of course, there are those creative aspects to ourself and spiritual aspects and, you know, expressing ourself and being in this physical world, being happy in this physical world, even if that doesn't mean that life is easy, but finding our peace and finding our expression is totally uh, our mission and whatever angle we come at it through. And I think that the arts at large really contribute to our sense of connection, you know, to, to so many things. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. You've brought in um, this, 
you know, these diverse practices into your work and to the everyday life for, for some of your clients. And I just wondered if you'd share some stories about how you've done that, how you've integrated those, that approach or that perspective into. Absolutely. Yeah. I, um, I almost even like to call it like, uh, you know how those there's life hacks and you get those life hack videos on Facebook and uh, yeah. all those funny little things. I almost like to call it like spiritual life hacks. <laughs> yeah, nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, this past year, I got introduced to powdered crystals. So that's when they've taken crystals and they've turned into a really fine sand or fine powder. Ooh, um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's really exciting. And um, I actually uh, put the powdered crystal in my visual art, my paintings. I mix it with my paint. So there is literal crystal on my canvases. But how I integrate that into every day and my work is I've actually put powdered crystals into my wall paint in my studio, in my shop. Wow, that's so cool. That's it so is cool. really cool. I'm like, I need like to... racing with ideas like powdered crystals. How cool. Oh, <laughs> like... man, right? There's just so many possibilities with powdered crystal. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely been a notice of my clients now that I have my, uh, my professional tattoo shop um, with powdered crystal in the wall paint. Um, my clients come in and you know, tattooing is not exactly the most relaxing activity in the world. <laughs> You've got to get in the zone to handle it. I know that the personal yeah, like experience. It, it, yes. There is pain, there's stress, There, your body goes into a mild amount of shock for sure. Um, but people talk about how peaceful and at ease they get as soon as they walk into the door of my studio. Oh, um, wow. I mean, on top of that, of course, I've got actual solid crystals all over the place too. Um, but creating that sense of space in such a, um, an area, an industry that is really quite stressful on the psyche and the body, uh, a lot of people notice they, they get really anxious, really excited coming in and they walk through the door and they just like sigh this big, um, breath of relief, right? Yes. And on top of that, I always have my oil diffuser going on in the tattoo studio. And, and you know, I, I always recommend these kind of things to people. And uh, um, even as something as simple as I'm now like this kind of person with my clients and friends that everybody comes to me like, oh, I really need to clear the energy in my apartment. But, you know, we're not allowed smoke in the apartment. Is there something I can do? And I tell them about making some liquid smudge. Why don't you try mopping your floors with liquid smudge, putting a spray right wash your walls, you know? And then, you know, on top of that, I think almost any tattoo artist can say that they tap into their intuition for their work because you are being paid and asked to draw this permanent piece of art to go on somebody. So obviously it needs to be exactly what they want. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And you know, if you're, if you're not willing to tap into your intuition on some level, you're probably going to get it wrong 90% of the time. Oh, it'll come back. Never mind. It'll always come back because it'll it's always so come back. Yeah. Right. If first you do not listen, it will try, it will come back, come back, come back. <laughs> the spiral path, right? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Because, and not out of uh, malice in any way, but to encourage us to climb higher, go higher you know, exactly. see what you can do, try that, expand that. No, you're still thinking you're limited. No, keep going, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. And every time it brings you back, you see it a little bit deeper and you're able to dig a little bit deeper. You know, um, you mentioned these methods of like the liquid smudge, awesome, the oil diffuser, um, and these powdered crystals used various ways. You know, a lot of times people wonder like, is that rock magic? And although <laughs> I agree that um, that crystals and stones have their own natural properties, just like we do, it takes intent to activate sometimes. And so you, by your doing that or them doing that, adding their intent to those physical vehicles that are so naturally able, you know, to to change the vibration of things. I just think that's wonderful. Well, without intent, you know, without your own intent, without your own energy or your own magic, you know, it's just going to be a rock that's kind of right. 
isn't it? Like, right, right. You can use it for a paperweight or you can use it to transform the entire energy in the room or you can use it to connect to other dimensions. Absolutely. You know, and if you don't resonate with crystals and you don't feel you need them, then that's fantastic too. You know, it's all about tools. And if oh, you're yeah. someone who thinks you need this huge array, this like, you know, storage room locker of tools in order to do your work, go for it. That's super great. If you think, you know, I can just pick up this piece of paper off the printer and this gold Sharpie, and that's probably all I need as long as I put my attention to it. That's fantastic too. You know, it's what resonates with you. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, I know some readers use very elaborate preparation and ritualistic techniques and, um, you know, do certain either prayers or blessings or incantations or something at the beginning of their reading. And I'm one of those minimalists. I'm like, <laughs> got my little timer. I've already switched my energy on the way driving to the office or a few minutes before the phone rings kind of thing. And um, I've got <laughs> my timer and a clipboard with a pen and paper and let's go. And yeah. <laughs> I think some of the, the, um, the people that do choose to use some type of blessing or introduction or calling in the four directions or the angels or the, you know, the higher vibrational beings of light and love, those are beautiful ways to demonstrate for the client that there is something going on there besides um, a regular day kind of thing. Yeah. Well, almost like or maybe it is a regular comfort, day. Yeah. yeah, almost like a comfort for the client as opposed to for you, right? Yes, I think so. And you mentioned tools, and I think that's exactly right. It doesn't matter whether it's crystals or plants or stones. You know, some people, because they tap in so easily, um, being around crystals can be kind of like overload for them. Yeah. Um, because they're just they already go up really easy, you know? Yeah. And um, so sometimes using grounding stones or other methods uh, might work better for them. But I think that's beautiful. And how I just love the idea that you embedded it in the paint. That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> and in your works, in your works. And, you know, subconsciously, everybody speaks to each other. So it's really interesting to think that when someone views one of your works, that subconsciously they're the energy and the intent and the whole creative intuitive thing that you're doing is sort of magnified. They may be picking it up, not realizing how profoundly deep that is. That's so cool. Yeah. And you know, you, you talk about, you know, some people are so easily tapped in. Well, I think that all of us are easily tapped in. It's just that, um, you need to learn to recognize it and you need to learn yes. to recognize it, you know, and stop thinking you're crazy because that voice in your head is telling you one thing. And, you know, it's about it's it's all about changing your perspective, which is what I call, you know, the art of life or life is art. When you start to change that perspective and you can start recognizing your own intuition the, and, you know, your own ability to tap into the divine or the universe or the oneness, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, recognizing it and and letting go of ego and letting go of that little um, that little uh, materialist in you that's telling you you're totally nuts, right? Yeah, let go of the intellect too, which is the hardest thing for us to do because we sort of survive in the material world by our wits, you know, and our intellect. So allowing ourselves to experience something that goes beyond our realm of thinking is really a wonderful gift to ourselves to just let go of preconceived ideas and let go of limits. And, you know, it's not opening up to things that are dark, it's opening up to possibilities that are just amazing. When you say um, art of life, uh, tell us a little bit about that. I just I, I love that the art of life that, that was just really caught me when we talked about what topic to pick. Tell us a yeah. little bit about that. To me, um, the art of life is really about changing our perspective, like on a base level. And when we look at our own lives, uh, when we look at the world around us and changing that perspective, it's about um, how we learn to deal with the chaos and the processing of those and what, you know, we might 
first perceive as seemingly random events we experience through our lives. But when you can change that perspective and you stop seeing it as random and you start noticing the colors and the vibrancy around you, that's when life is art. And everybody's life can be art. They can be masterpieces if they want it to be. But you yes. have to choose for it to be a work of art, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, I'm sure uh, some of our listeners out there, when you said life is not random, then, you know, those old tapes that we hold, like, well, whose fault is it that this happened? And, you know, this kind of thing, it really uh, can create blocks for us to view it that way, that it isn't you know, that it is sort of a random occurrence. And I think that that is kind of, you know, the resistances that we get, the don't go this way, it's not working out in that direction, that relationship isn't going to work. Do let us release it to find something better, to find the path of least resistance there. It's exactly it. You know, we can decide to sit around and complain about everything that has happened to us as opposed to um, taking every situation and every lesson, every mistake, every day as a chance to go, okay, so that happened. Now, how is this, how can I look at this in a way that's happening for me and not to me? Yes, yes. How is it happening for you, not to you? Exactly. That is exactly right. Where is your lesson in this? Where is opening another door? You know, it's so easy to get caught up in the happiness chase, constantly saying things, you know, like, I'll be happy when, like, I'll be happy when I get the new job, and then I'll be happy when I get the new house, and I'll be happy when. But, like, that never gets fulfilled. No. It's a replaying cycle and the grass will always be greener on the other side until you change the perspective on the grass on our side. I mean, That's sometimes right. I have to remind myself to be grateful too. It's, it's part of being human. It's still a human experience we're experiencing, right? Absolutely. But and I'm I think grateful. when we, oh, go ahead. I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful that I can be conscious of how my life is art. You know, I don't want to say I'm grateful that my life is art. It's art because I've created it. And I'm grateful that I can be conscious of how art has trickled its way into every aspect of my life and taken hold. You know, it's for me, it's about when you start looking at every single aspect of your day to day, every single aspect of your life, every article of clothing you choose, every piece of jewelry, every decision you make in one day. It's like a singular brushstroke in your overall masterpiece. And maybe your masterpiece is of the day. And so everything I choose today is the one brushstroke in today's masterpiece, but then today's masterpiece becomes a brushstroke in this aspect of my life's masterpiece, or then that becomes, you know, a, a, a brushstroke in my year and then a brushstroke in my life. And as opposed to life is unfair and life happens and you just have to deal with it. And sometimes we get the short end of the stick. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. If you change it, you're not getting the short end of the stick. Maybe you're getting the pretty pink stick now. <laughs> right, right. Well, and in doing that, in painting your life uh, metaphorically, and in your case, <laughs> literally, um, you know, uh, it's putting yourself in the role of the artist. You're putting yourself in the role of someone who can create, someone who can change things, somebody who can make beauty rather than standing in front of a blank canvas and saying, well, I've never painted before. I don't know what to do with this. Would someone else, isn't someone else supposed to come here and put something down and not realizing that it's our canvas? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we are all creative beings and it's, you know, you, you have to take that definition of artist and just throw it away because, you know, I talk to so many people, including like my husband, Mm -hmm. who's you know he's more of a blue collar kind of man but he's Mm -hmm. an artist he's creative he can make things he can fix things it's creating oh yes everybody's an artist in their own way if you are doing something if you're creating something you are creating energy you are turning energy into something else you're transforming energy you're making something out of nothing or out of various pieces every part of your life every aspect of your life every job that's out there it is all art. 
It's just like the expression, you know, the art of blank, 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 you know, the art of accounting, the art yeah, of... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because that is an expression that goes to say that everything you do is an art form and we're all creative beings. And when you can redefine that, it's really going to change how you view your life and how you view the things that happen in your life and how you choose to respond to them. Yeah. Um, uh, wow. Yes. Uh, you know, you were talking about being an intuitive tattoo artist too, which makes the body a canvas. Mm -hmm. Um, tell, talk to us about how you view that link. And I want to let you know, we are a couple of minutes before the bottom of the hour. Not, it's not all it's not always at the same time. So just it's <laughs> up and we'll pick it up on the other side if we get on a roll here. So, um. <laughs> um, yeah. So with the body as a canvas, uh, the body's a canvas in so many ways because there's clothing, there's the tattoos, there's intuitive tattooing. Also what you put in your body is going to sculpt this little chunk of clay that you call your physical fleshy self. But the intuitive tattooing, it's a way um, I often see it as a way for people to heal. Um, the term tattoo therapy has been thrown around for years and years and years. And that just comes from the so-called tattoo addicts or the tattoo collectors mm -hmm. who, you know, after they've had a really hard month or a couple months, they're like, you know what, I just need a tattoo because it makes me feel better. You know, it's tattoo therapy. And then I get to talk to my tattoo artist, you know, like people tell me their secrets. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> or stylist, you know. And, and I really look well, at my very personal. Of healing. Yeah, it's very personal. People are often getting um, memorial tattoos and it helps them heal and put closure on this loved one that, that that's passed. Or oh. I do a lot of cover ups or reworking and there's this old tattoo that maybe was poorly done or maybe they got in bad choice or a bad mind space and it's been haunting them for years and it's causing energetic blocks in their body because that is absolutely what happens. You know, we know acupuncture and different forms of eastern medicine talk about the physical connection points on our body to the actual energetic points in our body oh wow um hold that thought for us and we'll be back at the bottom of the hour again those that are listening can check Kaya out at soul of Boreal.com. now back to our show from a medium's perspective with host reverend Tracy Lockwood. If you missed the first half of the show or you'd like to listen to other past episodes, you can find them on YouTube. Just go to Medium Tracy Lockwood and you'll find uh, there uh, so many episodes and different perspectives that I think you'll be pleased. Please subscribe when you're there. And if you'd like updates, please remember to click the bell. They have a little thing on YouTube now where you have to click the bell if you want an update when something new is uploaded. Um, very much. So let's see. Um, I was trying to think who our guest next week is. I think she's Kathy Young of the Mountain Gypsies. And she's going to be talking to us on a topic we haven't decided about yet so far, but um, should be a fascinating show. So welcome back, Kaya. So happy that you are here with having us. Having tons of fun. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Right before the break, we were talking or you were talking about our bodies being a canvas and how clothes and the tattoo work, the intuitive tattooing, and regular tattooing, I'm sure, too, and food and exercise, you know, um, take that a little further and tell us what um, tattooing does as far as maybe shifting energy or something. Yeah, um, I was beginning to say before the break that um, we know that uh, with acupuncture and other sorts of Eastern medicines, holistic practices, um, we know that there's a correlation between physical spots on the body as well as energetic um, vortexes, right? Yes. Uh, certain pathways, there's certain, um, you, you might correlate certain sides of the body or parts of your body with certain chakras or energy systems or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. And I think when, um, when a tattoo is done and you haven't, you're on, you're on a good mind space for it. You haven't given it a lot of thought or maybe it's done by someone with some really bad energy. You know, that person is changing your 
your visual body forever and they are needles and they are going to access the different energy points of your body and when you have a a tattoo that just all around bad circumstances around it it was a bad day there was bad energy maybe you're in a bad point of your life it can definitely absolutely in my opinion block energy flow block healing block spiritual healing and flow through your body Sure. Whereas, you know, when you're getting a specific tattoo, when you're getting and you put all this thought to it, you thought about color, you thought about placement, you thought about design. You know, there's people out there who actually get all the chakras tattooed on them in the spots correlated with that to help with such things. Hmm. And, you know, I do a lot of cover ups and a lot of reworks and this helps bring new energy into this space. And a, a little bit of an anecdotal story. I was in... Um, Teotihuacan in Mexico this February uh, on a shamanic mystery tour with with the company Venus Rising Ooh. and I was really lucky in getting an appointment with a local indigenous shaman there oh and wow a lot of people during our week together had gone had gone off off the resort and and gone and getting um, an appointment with him and quite a few of them come back a couple of them had come back and he had told them that they had to stop getting tattoos <laughs> because it was blocking them energetically oh. no, he didn't tell this to everybody and so then I had my appointment set up and I'm thinking you know I'm a tattoo artist I have a lot of tattoos that's right what's he gonna say to me this is gonna be really interesting um not a word not a word about my tattoos um he he talked about um some guides coming through for you well it was somewhat interpreted because there wasn't much uh English spoken <laughs> there but uh, he shared about guides. He shared about where I had some certain blockages, but he kept telling me my spirit's strong. And then, and then told me he read my palm and told me I was like a medicine woman, which Beautiful. I thought was well, isn't that cool? But you know that there's that correlation that I that he did not tell me my tattoos were blocking. That he did not tell me that I had to stop because they're energetically blocking. And I think that's because of the situation around them. Yes, absolutely. And I can imagine, like you were saying about people having them redone sometimes for sure we are at a particular place in our life and we're projecting an image that we want to others to see or even that we want to reinforce for ourselves if it's in a place that's not visible to normal eye there um, but those things do change you know relationships shift uh, health practices shift ideologies shift etc and i just find it it would be really interesting and good for people to be able to get those things redone so that it harmonizes more yeah and i they think are it would time. Be such an escalated time in humanity if not even humanity so much but in the tattoo industry if more tattoo artists were aware of the type of energetic effect or spiritual or healing effect they're actually having on their clients because a lot oh, of yeah. I think you know and um I have uh, some sensitive friends who've told me that when I've tattooed images of crystals on them that that tattoo now houses this crystal energy or they get Reiki done on the sacred geometry piece I tattooed on them Ooh. and or they're teaching their um, apprentices Reiki and they use their bodies as like a tablet and they can't see under their clothes, right? And then these apprentices will put their hands over this tattoo I did on them. They'll just like, whoa, my hand's on fire. Huh? It's completely possible to do this. And that's why, you know, even researching your artist is really important because it can absolutely affect you and it can affect the image you put out there. Even if, again, they can't see your tattoos, it's putting out a certain kind of energy and yes. it's drawing in certain kinds of energies. Yeah, and it sounds like you're using it to bring more spirituality into people's lives, too. Absolutely. I I really feel like, you know, I can't get into too many specifics because there is, you know, the artist-client confidentiality. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, but I've definitely, if you want to use the word awakened some clients before, for sure, and um sometimes as a little side thing I like to make crystal jewelry and after talking with me these people are like oh well I feel like I should really buy that or they start messaging me like I like I mentioned in the first half they start um messaging me about Kaya what can I do about clearing this energy or I started looking into this link you sent me and wow my mind's blown and 
And, you know, there's all sorts of these conversations that can happen when you're sitting in my chair. <laughs> yeah, you're showing them or opening the way in a, a lot of sense there. You know, you talked about chakras um, and they are there are energy centers. Um, tell us a little bit uh, about how that integrates uh, you told us how it integrates with your work, but um, what do you want to add about chakras there? Uh, well, the first thing I want to, I think I'd really bring home about chakras is the idea of color therapy. Mm. And um, color therapy, I don't know if this is like an actual coin term, but it's something I've come up with that just kind of came to me a while back. And I really feel like the idea of color energy and color therapy is a really underrated and unlooked at aspect of spiritual healing life. Now, those of us who are familiar with chakras or identify it with them, whatever, know that there are correlating colors with the chakras, right? Right, right. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet running up the, the spine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the, the colors associated with them can house that same energy, that same vibrational frequency. And, you know, even if you don't want to um, put chakras and colors together, colors still have a huge impact on people's lives. And it might be um, subconsciously affecting your life. As an artist, I know that certain colors portray certain emotions in my work. Photographers will use certain filters or edits. You know, maybe they, they maybe they're an artist who likes to get in the Photoshop and do some fantasy edits. And when we look at their photos, we're completely transported to another dimension or another world. A simple piece of art or photo can make us feel nostalgic or bring us back to a time when it's easy to believe in magic and the magic around us. Right, right, yeah. And then you look at um, even as something very, very non-spiritual, like an interior designer. Interior designers learn about palettes of color. They learn that certain colors and certain tones will emote a certain mood in a room. Yes. Oh, you yes. Want, you want calming colors in your bedroom for sleep. Maybe you want an invigorating color in your bathroom. So when you get out of the shower in the morning, you're feeling energized and awakened. And, and you know, it doesn't just come down to colors of a room. It could be if people start noticing that they get drawn to certain colors at certain points of their life in many, many ways. And they start understanding what these colors can potentially mean. It can bring a lot of awareness and, and intuition to our own spiritual healing and where ourselves as our own healers can bring that healing to like, maybe you're buying a lot of red clothes. You repainted your living room red. You're eating a lot of red vegetables or root vegetables. You yeah. know, maybe you got some base chakra work that needs to be done. Right, right. Maybe you're in flight or flight. Maybe you're like sitting in survival mode because there's something going on with your shelter or your home and you're not feeling super comfortable or safe. Or on the other side, maybe you're being really attracted to blue and you're wearing a lot of blue and you got blue jewelry. And But maybe you start noticing that you're getting really bossy or you're getting really <laughs> like you're just you're just talking maybe a little too much without putting the thoughts into your opinions because your throat chakra is a little overactivated with all this blue in your life. Uh huh. Very interesting. Yeah. And you know, um, like like black science tells us that black absorbs the whole spectrum of colors. Yes. Yes. You know, in our modern society, a lot of pop culture, a lot of organized religion has told us that black is a really evil color. We see witches portrayed in black. Black is really dark. It's really negative. But really, if you think about it in the color sense, it absorbs all the spectrums of the, of, of the rainbow. It absorbs all the light. And we want more light in our bodies. We want more light in our lives. And, you know, hundreds, thousands of years ago, witches, medicine women, they already knew that inherently before science could tell them and they would wear black, they would have black. Yeah, things. it's receptive. It pulls in, uh, if you mix it on a palette, you take all the colors of the physical world together and mix them together, you get black. If you take all the colors of the non-physical world together, the spectrum of light, it's white. Exactly. So, yeah, it's very interesting. I love to wear black as a medium and I think of it I, I mean, I don't do it to be goth or dark or anything like that. I do it because I want to be out of the way, but I want to be able to perceive everything. You exactly. Know? It's it's like you're protected, but you can, can still absorb everything. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I wear other colors as well, but um, I do find it a favorite. <laughs> yeah. And, and you'll go through, a lot of people will go through periods of their life and it could be, you know, maybe a month or maybe it could be years at a time where you just have a favorite color. But, you know, people ask you all the time, you know, what's your favorite color? But the conversation doesn't go farther than that. It's like, why is that your favorite color? Right. And is it, is is it your favorite color to wear or is it your favorite color to have on the wall? Or is it your favorite color of flower? Yeah, it matters what what it's for, too. Absolutely. And this will definitely affect people on their daily lives without them even realizing it. Like. A lot of um, modern tattoo studios will have really like dark red or black walls with like painting like angry everywhere. colors. Yeah. Yeah. Or like purple or they're like getting kind of hipstery. Whereas my little tattoo studio with my powdered crystals on the wall, <laughs> uh-huh. it's like a, a light sage green and an earthy brown. And I've got mandala stencils and um, flower stencils. And it's because I wanted to evoke a sense of comfort, a sense of nature to go along with my name, Soul of the Boreal. Right. And, and brings and nature brings that calmness to us. Like as humans, we are animals and nature's really important in our psyche and our physical selves and our spiritual selves. And that's the energy I want to bring into my room. So that's oh, the absolutely. Yeah, your your home is a canvas too. <laughs> yeah, it's probably my biggest and most favorite canvas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's nice some of those things can be changed out. You know, and I do find that people shift the colors around them naturally as they move through different phases of life, too. They might prefer rich, dark colors and the color gold and then flip flop into lighter colors and the color silver, you know, the metal silver or something at different times. Yeah. My old home when we lived in town, I actually repainted the whole dining room and living room area in like fire engine red. Wow. (laughs) It was really intense. (laughs) Oh, I love red and teal together. What an It was super cool. It was really loud. (laughs) Not everybody liked it. And then moved into our off-grid home and it's all like light grays and then some highlighted walls of dark, deep, rich purple. And you know, it's it's, with with that red one, it was my first house and I had been moving all over the place for years I was very unsettled my root chakra was totally out of whack I didn't feel like anywhere was home at this point and so I painted everything red mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't realize right. that at the time but now I can look at my new home and the purple is very much in the higher chakras and that's where I like to live more of my life these days or at least try to well, and so for it might have been survival or, you know, grounding and finding a place that did feel like home, you know, sort of symbolizing your journey. And now you are at home in your purple, you know? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. For people that are listening, um, what are some ways that people could sort of implement some of these ideas in their life? I think the first thing would be um, would be actually a really simple exercise that absolutely everybody can do. And that's journaling. But if you want to go to another aspect called art journaling, and that's even just taking a really tiny notebook that fits in your pocket and maybe start writing down the colors every day you see that are popping out at you. What are you eating a lot of? Are you wearing a lot of the same colors? When you go outside, what's the first color you always notice when you're in a new area? And then take that information and start learning about what colors mean, learning about um, the different tones. And this might even change how you look at the natural world around you. Instead of just going like, oh, it's all green. You'd be like, oh, it's uh-huh. a beautiful shade of emerald. That's a beautiful shade of mint. That's a, And your world will become more vibrant, which makes it more positive, which will help you be more positive. Then there's a one of my favorite exercises, which is a little more on the intense side, Um, but it's really, really great for those of us who have like what I call artistic brains, which are never calm and are never still and meditation's incredibly hard. (laughs) Right. Um, I, so it's like active meditation and it's, and, um, like the idea of automatic writing, if anyone's familiar with that, it's automatic painting. You don't need any artistic experience. You do not need to be an artist. You don't need to think that you can even draw a stick man. Doesn't matter. And it's about going into a meditative state whether that's playing music, burning smudge, maybe you do want to sit down for a half an hour meditation or a five minute one, or maybe you go for a walk in nature without your music in 
and just calm your mind and focus on your breath, have a blank canvas, have a blank piece of paper, some paint, some pencil crayons, completely shut off your brain as to what you want to paint and just start doing it. And you don't have to let your brain completely stop. Let thoughts come up as they come up. You know, it'll help bring out these emotions. It'll help bring out underlying issues that you might not have been aware of, but that are affecting your stress level in a day-to-day life. And it's about making your physical body busy so that your internal body, your energetic body, your psyche, your conscious can do its work without having to think about what your hand is doing. Yeah, that's and you very actually cool. get really surprised at the image you end up with. Maybe it's totally abstract. Maybe you ended up painting your one of your spirit guides without even realizing it. Yeah. There's incredible things that can happen. It's a great practice for absolutely everybody, especially those who can't shut their brains off enough to like sit in silence. And it's it's a really great way to do some art therapy at home, to do some color therapy at home. And if you're feeling if you're more versed in chakras and colors, and you think that um, your bay shockers are kind of out of whack and need some work, well, make your whole palette in the reds, yellows, oranges, blacks, and paint with them. Use color therapy that way. Oh, yeah, intentionally using color to balance or to express. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting concept. Well, I really feel like we all are inherent healers. We're all naturally supposed to be born with the knowledge to heal ourselves, just like animals are. But, you know, we've become more disconnected with nature in our more modern society. Nature's become a luxury as opposed to a necessity. And so we've lost that kind of intention or that ability to recognize our natural intuition. Yes. And so being able to at least address it in this sort of manner, in this sort of easy play, you can start to realize that you can be your own little healing therapist. You can do it your own, yourself if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to do the, the planning, the underpainting, the detailing, the texturing, and then the finish on top of your canvas, right? Right, right. And so it's just about tapping into your own inner healing. It, it's, it's great to be able to go to all these healers who are popping up now and to shamans and, you know, um, to everybody, but when you can learn to tap into your own intuition and when you can build that and get your connection back to the natural world, you can find that you will be able to heal yourself in a lot of different levels. And it's just about finding the language that speaks to you as opposed to saying, you know, my language is I am the artist of my own life and I am creating my masterpiece. Maybe some people like, you know, I'm the writer or the storyteller or I'm the main actor on the stage of life. And all ways like that. It's about finding your own language that resonates with you and your own actions. And, and then you will be able to tap into your inner shaman or your inner healer or your, your inner psychic. Yeah, I think there's a direct link between intuition and healing and developing your intuition and your personal healing. Because as you tune into the situations in other people's lives, you have to be very honest. And then that makes you be honest with you. Exactly. Oh, Kaya, it's been a pleasure. We're at the end of the show. I can't believe it. I just want to thank you so much. Went by so fast. <laughs> it did. It did. If you want to reach Kaya, you can find her at souloftheboreal.com. And I just want to remind our listeners that it's never inappropriate to be kind. And without integrity, you have nothing. <laughs>